Hello, this is Kevin Benedict, Independent Mobility Analyst, reporting from Guilford, UK today, which I understand is south west southwest of london there we go i all i know is a 30 minute express train <laughs> 30 minutes by train and, and four days by horse <laughs> very good and i happen to have the just the privilege of being here with mark watson who's the general manager of um antenna software and what is your responsibilities mark how far and how wide do your responsibilities go right. so i rejoice in the title of executive vice president um for technology and engineering so i own the product development um, right through from product management through engineering to support uh, for the entire antenna product line. Very good. So a year ago, you and I had a podcast that we put together, and we talked about a, a variety of different subjects, but HTML5 was on that uh, agenda as well. We talked about it. So what have you seen in the last year and a half or so in HTML5, and, and what impact has that had on your product line? Well, I think it's had a ton of impact on the marketplace. I think um, the um, probably a year and a, a year, year and a half ago, I think most of the projects that were being done in mobility for writing apps were probably being done in pure native. Um, various people, including ourselves, had and have platforms which allow you to write software once and run it on many platforms. We um, uh, also have um, had for the last three years, actually, we were early to market um, an HTML5 container uh, application, uh, which has been through various names. We sold it through uh, AT&T as the Workbench um, application, and uh, subsequently it's been marketed as Vault, and, and now it's part of uh, uh, our Chroma suite. Um, what that kind of technology allows you to do is, is write applications use, using HTML5, which has become increasingly popular, mm -hmm. and um, to uh, put that inside a native wrapper so it has access to the native capabilities of the device, which HTML5 browsers don't normally do, um, and also package it up so that it can be sold um, if it's uh, for consumers or downloaded, acquired, managed um, via application stores. So that hybrid approach uh, between HTML5 and native has, has gained a lot of traction over the last year or so and we're increasingly seeing more and more projects being rolled out um, using that approach. We've certainly made a big investment in it. Let's talk about mobile middleware. Yeah. What impact does HTML5 have on mobile middleware? How does it work with mobile middleware? Does it make mobile middleware more important or less important or just what's the impact on it? Well. Um, I think mobile middleware is still um, pretty important. It does a variety of jobs. So, you know, just to kind of um, draw out the, the, the kind of more general picture about the, the role of mobile middleware, um, the, um, you know, typically with a, with a MEAP, M-E-A-P, uh, Mobile Enterprise Application Platform, as, as, as Gartner has previously called it. They've changed the name recently. We can get onto that, should you so wish. Um, the... Uh, uh, with, with that kind of platform, the, the elements you would have would be there'll be a client, there would be um, a development platform, um, there would be um, a gateway or server which manage the integration between the client and the customer back end, um, and there'd be some management functionality. Um, how has HTML5 changed that? Well, you know, previously a lot of those HTML5 platforms, and it's still the case that most of the uh, free ones are not laced into that kind of environment. So the difference between what we would provide and you know something like a phone gap, or one of the differences um, is that we also have this integration gateway on the back end mm -hmm. that performs a number of jobs. It mediates between the client and the customer data, wherever that might be. Um, and it also, in particular, manages synchronization for offline capability. So um, HTML5 within that has not so much made a difference, but um, that kind of platform has had to embrace and support HTML5. I think where, it has, where HTML5 has made a difference is um, it has improved portability across platforms. Um, it has um, made it easier to match the development of new applications to, the, to skills which are more prevalent and which are cheaper um, to acquire on the market. 
um, and it has made it easier to integrate that kind of platform with web server um, type backends. So, Mark, you guys not only cover the B to E space, yeah, but you're also covering the B to C space, so business to consumer. Yeah. Can those both sides of that business be done on the same platform? Well, I think, um, well, yes. Um, I mean, in terms of you know what we cover, we're still in both cases selling to enterprises. So we're not writing Angry Birds. We are writing applications which allow enterprises to reach out to the consumers or to reach out to uh, their employees. So within with that constraint. Um, yes, it is possible. I mean, you, and you, you still need the same basic set of things running from the client through the integration server to the back end, um, which include security, robustness, scalability, distribution, modularity, all those, um, you know, sort of, I've, I've listed five there. There are probably seven virtues I can probably reach um, if, if, if pressed. So, I, yes, you can do those things from the same platform. And we do have customers, you know, in particular, for example, in the banking space where security is very important in that business-to-consumer uh, relationship um, using that kind of platform um, in field services on a business-to-employee basis. Obviously, security is more important. Some things have probably a greater weighting. Probably analytics has got a greater weighting in the consumer space because you know less about what consumers are thinking than what your employees are thinking. It's a larger set of people um, and, um, and the data is therefore, it's, it's kind of more interesting because it needs to be brought into the business. Um, management um, and control is probably more important in the business to employee space. Um, but yeah, you can, you can run them from the same platform. So we've talked about BD and B2C and HTML5 and mobile middleware. Um, let's talk about cloud computing. Mobile in the cloud, enterprise mobility in the cloud. What are you seeing out there? What's your thoughts on the future of enterprise mobility in the cloud? Well, um, I think businesses are, um, in general, becoming more accommodating of the cloud. I don't think all of them are yet. Um, are the, you know, by the same token, I talk to my bank in the UK and the employees aren't allowed to use email. So um, some people are naturally laggards. Um, the, um, um, so, but some people you know, um, are bought into the cloud. I think the cloud makes our kind of business easier um, and easier to consume for customers because we are in a fast-moving space. We are, the cloud is very important to Antenna um, as a platform because it allow, it gives us a vehicle to deliver innovation to customers far more to our customers far more quickly. We are cycling most of our uh, product components uh, from an engineering point of view probably once a month um, and um, you know on that level of change across multiple components um, it 's quite difficult to do that with on premise uh, delivery. Uh, to supply it in a way that customers can easily consume um, complexity on that basis. So for us to manage that complexity and take that issue away from our customers um, is important. Now, there are certain responsibilities that come with that in terms of responsiveness to data regulation, in terms of managing security, in terms of managing availability and so on, uh, which obviously um, we have to fulfill. I think customers... Um, for, for some customers, it's very important that even if the service is in the cloud, that their data be behind the firewall. And that's another part of what that uh, middleware platform can do. And it's been built into middleware from a fairly, you know, not just our middleware, but other uh, MEEP-type platforms from um, um, a very early stage. And it really comes into its own in this environment because it does give the customer the choice of running the service within the cloud and keeping the data uh, on their premises. Another trend we're seeing out there is, you know, people are using the term MDM, mobile device management, less and less, and they seem to be replacing it with the mobile application management or mobile data management kinds of things. Do you see that same kind of trend? And what's what from a vendor perspective? What's the difference, and how does it change your role? Well, I think. Um the, uh, there's an increasing trend towards consumerization in IT generally, and in particular in mobile. 
Um, you'll have read about the trend of bring your own device, uh, which you know many um, companies are now embracing. Um, it's, it's actually becoming more difficult for companies to impose devices upon employees. If, the, if they're going to buy um, a less capable device than the um, employee is going to buy, the employee is going to probably naturally want to use their own phone if, it, if it's a couple of generations ahead of what the IT group are handing out. Um, so that is becoming more and more prevalent, either officially or unofficially. Um, and it's become the case that companies then have to respond to that. Now, traditional MDM solutions where you lock down the device, can change the passwords, put the company logo on the device, so, you know, all kind of these kind of extreme um, authoritarian measures don't really play well when the, when the employee has, has, has uh, had to pay for the device. You turn up at, turn up at work in the morning, you find your <laughs> password's been changed and it's got the company logo on it and, and the picture of your family's been removed and all, all kinds of things. So that's not great. So I think the trend is moving from mobile device management towards mobile application management. Um, there are different ways of doing that. Um, but it goes back to what I was saying earlier, that you know, within the enterprise space, you need a degree of control, but that degree of control needs to be apposite and appropriate to the context. Um, and um, uh, one example of something we do you know, within that container that I described earlier, um, we can put all multiple applications within the container within a, behind a, a single sign-on, um, which allows you effectively to partition the device. Um, so that the um, user has got their work context and they've got their personal context for the applications. Now, where I think that will go moving forward is more and more different types of content. I mean, at the moment, the concentration in the marketplace is really on apps, um, but apps aren't the only kind of corporate content. And when it comes back to this view of having to control things from a central point, you don't want a different control point for your apps mm -hmm from corporate documents, corporate policy, um, from other types of corporate content. So I think we're, move, we're in a stage now where we're seeing a, a big strong move from mobile device management to mobile application management. I think mobile application management in turn will probably abut against mobile content management. And you know, we're getting more into you know, what, potential, what previously would have been in the PC world, in the traditional IT world, the kind of portal space, company mm -hmm. portal space. So I think all of those things are, are coming together. And we're really in phase one or two, probably it's a five, six phase process. When I look across all the other vendors out there right now, you're starting to see everybody come along with the enterprise application uh, store story. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the role of companies and enterprises needing, to, so first of all, do they need an enterprise app store? And if they do, what's the value from your perspective? The short answer is yes, I think they do. I think there are a number of benefits to an enterprise application store. Really, it comes back to, you know, what is one of the key factors for B2E mobility? And as I said earlier, it's control. So having a position where you can control, as an IT team, the business applications which are distributed and potentially the content which is distributed to employees is significant. In any large organization, that's not going to be necessarily by individual. It's going to be by role based on enforcement of policy of some kind. Some things you want to be mandatory. You want to enforce that upon the, the device. You may have regulatory requirements um, as a company which um, do that. Some things might be optional. In all cases, in the optional cases, you want a central point where people can come and find the right versions of the applications, where, the, where updates can be managed, and, and also an experience which is not dissatisfactory and, again, authoritarian and, and annoying to use. So um, I think people have got used to the user experience of consumer app stores. They expect some of that in the, t in the way in which they're dealing with um, enterprise applications. Equally, the um, employer um, is, is, is going to require a set of controls which they need to enforce. So it's a kind of marriage of those, those two things. I think enterprises potentially, we see less demand for consumer enterprises running their own consumer app stores. But there is an emerging requirement um, for that as well, actually. Um, it's always been the case that 
uh, mobile operators have, have typically run them, and, and also people like Nokia and, and um, some device manufacturers. But what we're finding as well is, is that um, uh, organizations would like to point you at the official consumer application. Now, that may be because of the way that the various device app stores work. It may be a link back into the Apple store, or it may be back into Google Play, or to them necessarily because that's the way it works, to the Microsoft app store. Uh, but they'd like you to, to, uh, um, to direct you to the officially approved application, not the 15 um, unofficial applications which might in some way damage or diminish their reputation. So there is also an emerging requirement for consumer app stores as well. Let me put you on the spot here, Mark. There's fewer and fewer independent mobile vendors out there. The ERPs and other large software companies have been buying your competitors. Where does that leave Antenna in this mix? Um, it leaves us as the strongest independent player. And, and if you, you know, that's underlined by the recent Gartner survey. I, I know some people hate and some people love Gartner surveys. Um, um, on one hand, because it might disprove their opinion, and on the other hand, it might prove their opinion. Um, but uh, in the recent one, um, uh, there are three people in the leader quadrant. One is SAP, one is Cyclo, which was just acquired by SAP because Gartner measures on the previous year and Cyclo existed in that year. And the third one is ourselves. So um, we're obviously the leading independent player in the space. I think that's a very strong uh, position to be in. Um, and um, we're, we're very proud of it. Very good. Mark, I want to thank you very much for sharing your insights with our audience today. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you.